Hold my hand inside your hands. Then he continues to say in the same chapter, chapter 7, first epistle to the Corinthians, now about virgins. I have no command from the Lord, but I give a judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Because of the present crisis, remember this, we will have four conditions here. Because of these four causes, if you wish to remain unmarried, that is reasonable. Four causes. And the four causes are not and do not include anything about uh, the, a, a low esteem of sex in the married life. Listen carefully. That's in verse 26. Because of the present crisis, and that was because of the uh, persecution the church was suffering from. They used to threaten the husband by torturing his wife or the other way around to make them uh, leave Christ and the faith. So he was saying, because of this present crisis, I think that it is good for you to remain as you are, if you are virgins. Are you married? Don't seek a divorce. Are you unmarried? Don't look for a wife. And the reason here is the present crisis. Remember, that's number one. But those who marry will face more troubles in this life, and I want to spare you this. And he is not talking about the trouble because you are married as such, as if marriage is a troublesome relationship. Of course not. Otherwise, he wouldn't have chosen it as Christ and the church. But the trouble again here is the trouble I explained about the persecution and threatening husband and wife by the other spouse. What I mean, brothers, and he's trying to dis discuss it in more detail because it's a difficult point and their minds are already set on the point of not to marry is better than to marry. So he's trying to explain and you know when you talk to a child and he wants to do something wrong and he comes to you with a long project of what he wants to do, you tend to try to see what could be positive in what he's telling you so you, you want something to agree about. So you don't push him off altogether. So you are trying to say, I'm telling you this, this and that, but yes, yes, I agree with you on this and that, uh, that's reasonable. That's a way to have the win-win situation in negotiations and conflict resolution as we know that. So I think that it is good for you. No. What I mean, brothers, is that the time is short. This is number three reason here. Time is short because they all expected Christ to come in a very short period of time. That's, that was the belief and conviction of the early church. So present crisis, uh, many troubles in this life for the people who are married and because time is short. These are three causes. The fourth is coming. From now on those who have wives should live as if they had none for the world in its present form is passing away. I would like you to be free of concern because of the present crisis, because of all what I explained. So these are the four conditions. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affair, how he can please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world. And we'll come to this world and discuss what he means. But the married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how he can please his wife. An unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affair. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world, how she can please her husband. I am saying this for your good, your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in an undivided devotion to the Lord without distraction. The world at that time had nothing to do with the meaning that came about with the monastic tradition when we started to have the people of the world and the people of the monastery. This was a distortion of the meaning of the people of the people of God, the clero, uh, kleronomia. Kleronomia means the uh, part that belongs to God. And that's why the word clergy actually should mean all the church. But by time in history, they started to divide the kleronomia, uh, that what belongs to God, into clergy and laity. 
and that division is not biblical and not Christian and it is a distortion that happened in history especially with the monastic movements where everybody started to talk about those of the monastery means the people of God the very highly highly esteemed people the saintly people because they are celibates and they are worshipping day and night and they have nothing else to be concerned about except worship and the people of the world all those who can't have self-control so they got married and they are living away from the monastery sort of a second-class citizen within the church that distortion is a corrupt thought it started around that time we are not going to discuss all its history we'll try to read some of these negative comments even by great fathers of the church which is a blemish in the history of the church but they were saintly yet they have different opinions a saint does not mean he's perfect in everything. He's perfect in his relationship with God, but he can have opinions and convictions that are imperfect as well. That is a perfectly normal thing, and every human being has the right to do wrong and the right to think wrong, and he will be corrected by God or by others around him. There is no shame in that. So what St. Paul is trying to say here, because if he meant that to be married you are serving the world, in the ugly meaning of do not love the world and the things in the world because the, whatever is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. These are the lusts which as I explained in the in previous video clips means if you seek the pleasure of these good appetites, food and sex, self-esteem, self-actualization, ownership, safety, if you seek the pleasure alone without achieving the goal and without the responsibility, which is a heavy responsibility, to achieve the goal as well, then the good appetite becomes lust. In Arabic, the good appetite is shahiyya and the bad appetite is shahwa. And both in Arabic are one and the same word, unfortunately, because the ayya and ahwa are the vowels in Arabic and they are interchangeable in writing. And that's why many people think that the good appetite for food or for sex or for ownership or for self-esteem is in itself the lust that St. John is warning us about in his words, do not love the world and the things in the world for all what's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life, which means the lust of uh, being famous and being great, the esteem need when it is distorted and corrupted. So I wanted to understand that lust is the wrong and bad desire. But any of these three that St. John is mentioning has a good appetite when it is lived, goal and pleasure together. And we've discussed that in detail. So when St. Paul is using the word, the word world here to be concerned about the affair of the world, he cannot mean that marriage is of the world because in the bible this term is of the world means of satan of the devil of evil and other things are of god which are good so whatever he meant by the word world here could be understood that the world here has the good meaning like uh, in the uh, uh, verse of god so loved the world that he sacrificed and offered his only begotten son for our redemption and salvation. So the world means the good creation of God when it is the good sense of it. If it is the ugly sense and bad sense, it is the evil that is in the world, not the good creation of God which is pure and beautiful and made by the hands of God that are pure. So when he says you are going to be concerned for the affairs of this world if you are married, it means you will serve God by serving your wife and your kids. And that is how your vocation and mission is in life. So don't say, and he's answering the first question of, I want to leave my wife for a little bit, or she wants to leave the husband for a bit. He's trying to say, listen, if you are unmarried, yes, it is understandable. You can spend all your time serving God day and night. But if you are married, your main vocation and main style of living here is to serve God by serving your spouse and your kids. Is that clear? He's not despising to be concerned about the affairs of the world in marriage. He's saying this is the vocation, this is the style. Like telling a doctor, if you are a doctor, you don't work as a mechanic in that workshop there. Your job is within a hospital. Do you understand? And if you are a teacher, your job is not in the hospital, but at school. 
it doesn't mean that school or the hospitals, one of them is better. It just means there are two different vocations.